Thank you, Brenda Hillman. I'm never going to think of Ant the same way. Um, wow, just so many wonderful images. Uh, the details of that congressman's ear with the light going through his lobe was just absolutely astonishing. And the way Brenda saw the humanity in, in tried to in the congressman, thinking about his family and also about the policeman. What a deft, poetic move. It's that, it's that balance. So we hear her opposition, but she doesn't let hate become hate. It's an extraordinary gift. Um, and I just love that line, the nightstick cannot poke the soul. Brenda Hillman, thank you so much. When I quoted uh, Martin Estada's poem to Sam Hamill, where he says, let the blasphemy be spoken, poetry can save us. Um, some of you might have rolled your eyeballs. I couldn't see if you did or not. But, <laughs> and, but I have to say, for sure, there was someone here in the audience who likely nodded her head. That's because her harrowing 2013 prose poem memoir, which includes her time as a sex worker in Vancouver, which almost destroyed her physically and spiritually, is named without apology, How Poetry Saved My Life, a Hustler's Memoir. That poet and spoken word veteran and the owner of a wonderful marmot now, <laughs> because she won, she won the spoken word um, contest last night. Um, yeah, boy, that, that, that marmot was, uh, a lot of people wanted that marmot. Um, gosh, I wanted that marmot. I guess I'll have to become a spoken word poet and a, and a good one. Can you imagine this, from the Vancouver downtown east side to teacher and winner of many awards, the Writers' Trust Prize in 2012 for LGBT writers, and the 2013 Vancouver Book Award. What a journey. She tells it how she sees it. A title for one of her sections in her memoir is To All the Butches I Loved Between 1995 and 2005, an open letter about selling sex, selling out, and soldiering on. Dawn has just released her first full-length poetry collection, Where the Words End and My Body Begins. Please welcome Amber Dawn. That's just one hell of an intro. Hey, what an incredible MC you are. It takes a lot of work to hold a space like this, um, so thank you so very much. Uh, I, I'm so honored to be invited here and so thrilled to be representing Vancouver, the most expensive place to live in North America. <laughs> we're number one, we're a city of incredible growth, more concrete, more glass, more condos, more missing women, more inflation, more boutique yoga, more coffee, more artisanal tacos. <sighs> I have a lot to say about Vancouver. Um, <laughs> the story that I've heard is we've seen this rapid increase in population ever since Expo 86. Um, I don't know if some of you have also heard this myth of 1986 being the time when Vancouver just started booming. Uh, what's often overlooked when talking about Vancouver and the rise in population uh, is the number of queers that come to Vancouver and have been coming to Vancouver for the past five decades. I'm just going to give you a really quick timeline. Um, Vancouver's Pride Parade dates back to the 1970s, which makes it the oldest Pride Parade in Cascadia region. Um, in the 1980s, St. Paul's Hospital was the first in BC to treat HIV and AIDS. Uh, so there was definitely a number of gay men who came to Vancouver because they had to, it was life and death. Uh, in the late 1990s, uh, the Rainbow Refugee Committee was the first uh, organization in Canada to advocate uh, refugee status uh, for people that needed to come to Canada um, because of uh, prosecution due to their sexual orientation. Um, so while I have a ton of things to complain about when I talk about Vancouver, I, I have 
um, this wonderful um, legacy of queer activism, um, of lovers and fighters <laughs> coming to Vancouver year after year. Uh, hundreds more of us came just because they couldn't hack it out in like Prince Rupert or Duncan or wherever bomb fuck postal code uh, we came from. You know, especially in the era before social media, queers needed to arrive in a city like Vancouver, somewhere that had a gay bar or a lesbian cafe. Um, I came in 1992. Uh, it was the same year that Little Sister's bookstore was bombed for the third time. Uh, it was the same year uh, a scrappy little press at the time called Pink Triangle Press launched its now infamous newspaper called The Extra West, uh, which became a very publicly visible and very out and proud um, publication that was seen on the streets of Vancouver. Um, it was an exciting time to be queer and be in Vancouver. It still is an exciting time. There's lots of work to do. Uh, so I'm going to read all from Where the Words End and My Body Begins. Uh, one thing that I learned about uh, writing the, the memoir uh, that was so generously spoken of is um, writing can be such a, a lonely business, especially when writing uh, through pain, writing to find dignity, uh, writing to resist, writing to heal. It, it can be quite solitary and quite lonely. Uh, so I wanted to write some poems that made me feel less alone. And I looked to the glossa form of poetry. Uh, this is a form that, as many of you may know, is you get to draw from poets that you feel uh, the most inspired, maybe the most held by. Uh, you pick a favorite quatrain from those poets. And from those four lines, you build your own 40-line poem. Uh, so I'll read three of those. And uh, I will start with a quote by Adrian Rich. No one imagined us. We wanted to live like trees, sycamores blazing through the sulfuric air dappled with scars, still exuberantly budding our animal passions rooted in the city. Quiet, you whippersnappers. You were born in the 80s, and I must school you. <laughs> our four mamas and papas didn't have the luxury of safe assembly, much less Facebook. Think Stonewall had a hashtag? Alan Ginsberg just yelled, defend the fairies, hashtag fucking riot, hashtag drag bomb, boom. Queer speech had to boom to be heard in real time. Queer gate was a march. Queer hearth was our rage. We shared the meager feast or starved potluck. No one imagined us. We wanted to live like trees or at least weeds. We wanted to take root. Many of us still sow a humble seed in order to grow temporary space knowing a single moment can turn it all to rot. I've been involved with the rise and fall of a handful of radical underground conclaves. Only queer kin can show you the way of the mercilessly bright mainstream, away from the gentrifying rows of condos and Starbucks and capital influx, past sycamores blazing through the sulfuric air, past tar patch dead-end streets to 1,000 square feet of damp concrete nestled under a union workers built bridge. I tell you, it's worth it to find yourself, no matter how briefly, in a community-driven, collectively-run, anti-capitalist, gender non-conforming, sex-positive hotspot, here, now, raise our voices, here, now, shake our asses. Our asses are hairy warriors, thick hips. Our asses are dappled with scars, still exuberantly budding with desire. Daisy chain, finger cuffs, fisting the forsaken misery right out of each other, fucking the magic back into our bodies. This grace is ours. This grace is no holds bar, believe me. I have lovers and friends from Berlin to Brooklyn. The same radical spaces exist there, but don't take this grace for granted. Let me remind you a few hundred queers gathered in unlicensed warehouses for orgies or for organizing is still considered a disruption. Let me remind you queer roots reach deep. Never forget the graves of our four mamas and papas are rooted underground. What's, um, I'm so grateful for about being queer um, is that I, I don't have a home now. I have many, many homes. Being queer is kind of like being a poet, um, where you just end up having friends and families all over the place. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. You'll hear me mention specific places, specific names, and it's okay if you don't know what I'm referencing. That's just fine. Um, I'm referencing creators, just like all of us. 
And uh, this quote comes from Sina Karras, who asks, which lifetime beyond what brawn, who knew where the road would take us neat, neat the rows of apple trees there in the valley, red summers, the heat. Something happened to me at Backroads Pizza in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Locals say the land is magic, although white people are always claiming land is magic. The woman who non-consensually hugged for too long wore bone jewelry, worshipped Gaia, and wanted me to know that because I live in this world, I must love all the world. Over her shoulder, I watched genderqueer acrobats Valdez on a pool table. A loner emptied his flask into a can of cola. I ached with odd longing, but from which lifetime, beyond what brawn, who or what was I lovesick for? Crying can help. Eyeball orgasms release endorphins in past lives, like get salt water, they say. I licked a ramekin of peppermilk gravy clean at Rhea Bluebird in Atlanta, Georgia. Simone de la Ghetto bent Clyde over the picnic table. Juba carefully considered his huevos, Jerry Lee his bacon. Annie Oakley and the Scarlet Harlots Cardinal Mains booked in the morning. The movement, the mantra, we are artists, innovators, geniuses, geniuses, innovators, artists, artists, innovators, geniuses, and we are hungry and infinity. I presumed I knew where the road would take us, not the interstate. The intersections of our remarkable survival would be the place where we landed. I was younger, and homecoming seemed far ro more romantic than fuck coming. Queer fuck was everywhere, and home was a blue sky all but sci-fi idea. Maybe fancy land in Humboldt County, California. Maybe idle dandy near Nashville, Tennessee. A place with a goat named Allie Sheedy. The free chickens all kikis. That's the dream, right, on the other side of mighty America where the eggs in the nest aren't normal, normal. Grapevines aren't neat, neat. The rows of apple trees aren't really rows at all. Just fruit, handsomely idling, like the lackadaisical stacks of books at Modern Times Collective in San Francisco, where I abandoned the pages of Go Magazine to scope the daydreamy staff person behind the till. Their name, pronouns, relationship status, dating preferences, kinks unknown but oh so precious with the paperback spine of the left hand of darkness, I imagined my daisy print underwear in their teeth. <laughs> I carried my fantasies along scorching 24th Street. Why must I wear black in August? I always fall in flummoxed love there in the valley, red summers, the heat. I won't do that voice for my last poem, I promise. <laughs> Yes, poets and love poems indeed. This last one is for my wife, um, who, when I met her, I did what any reasonable person in our time and age does when our, they're asked out on a date, is I googled her. <laughs> <laughs> and I found that she was one of the young lawyers who fought for marriage equality in Canada all those years ago. Yeah. She was uh, on the list of a number of gays and lesbians versus Canada, um, which of course was one. Um, so this quatrain is from Jane Eaton Hamilton. I watched your breast, which was fuller than the night on my porch when I first undid your buttons. The sheet beneath you was green. It was almost our anniversary. I watched your breast, which was fuller than when we met. I thought you were starving. Raw-boned butch lap like a wooden chair. I vowed to feed you everything I had. Tender a feast, charm your tongue with salted green peas, drunken apricots, sweet sun tea. Gradually, your ribs sank into the waxing flesh I'd come to know like my own. The night on my porch, when I first undid the milkmaid braid from my hair, my temples daubed with rose oil, baby powdered scalp, Elder cedar crooning in the yard, early peonies, olfactory romance, June's warm spell, an invitation to strip down. Our undressed bodies, always allegory. Our love made us fabulous, we tell our story. And tell it again when I tug your shirt sleeve, open your buttons. The sheet beneath you is green buffalo plaid, 
banked by patchwork quilts. This is our December bed, the yarn of our winters. Frost hugs the windows we wear, goose flesh yawning skin. You sing Frosty Le Bonhomme, and my heart becomes a snow globe. Each glittering snowflake chimes, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. It is almost our anniversary when northern flickers hammer our roof in the morning. <laughs> Magnolia buds split their pink lips. I lick the same raindrop off the tip of your nose as I've licked for the last six springs. It still tastes like a vow, but today I will write a poem to mark the occasion. Thank you so much for having me.